What is going on everyone? This is Ninja Geek here bringing you some Black Ops 2 and the reason why for Black Ops 2 is because this is continuing from my series of the top 5 things in Call of Duty and the top 5 worst things in Call of Duty, the top 5 best and worst things in Call of Duty and right now we are on Black Ops 2 going down the list all the way going to Call of Duty 4 so we are going to get started here counting down from 5 to 1, 1 being the best thing to 5 being the okay thing so you know we're going to count down from there the best things now this list was kind of hard to make up because uh, you know, I a Black Ops 2 wasn't really my favorite Call of Duty, and uh, I'm gonna explain each and everything of why I chose it uh, to be the best, obviously. So first off, we're gonna start off with number five. is a pretty long one. Is any kind of DLC, DLC slash zombie map slash multiplayer map slash weapon camo, uh, any kind of weapon camo. It doesn't have to be DLC. Uh, the weapon camos, first we'll start off with the weapon camos in this game, especially including gold. All of them are really good, you know, you got your regular default ones, and then you got the uh, classic gold one that looks like it was from Black Ops 1, so all the camos are good. All the multiplayer maps, I mean, some of them are bad, yeah, you got uh, Aftermath and uh, Turbine, I think that's what they called it. Uh, you know, you got some bad maps there, but overall, they're uh, generally good DLC maps that they had within the DLCs. Um, like, Grind is one of them. Grind was one of the best DLC maps. And then, of course, they had the DLC zombie maps. I mean, the um, the default zombie maps were pretty good, too, but the DLC ones were uh, pretty good. The only DLC one that I hated was the first one. I can't remember the name of it right now. But the first one, it was, oh, yeah, it was uh, Die Rise. So that one, you know, you're on this building. It's just, I, I didn't like it at all, to be honest. But, you know, I'm not complaining. The DLC zombie maps after that were all pretty good. So, next we're going to be moving on down the list to number 4, which it's it doesn't really have anything to do. This is just, number 4 is generally good maps overall. So, like I discussed before, uh, just the general default maps within the game, not including the DLC maps. You know, you've got, uh, this map right here was an okay map. It wasn't really the best. But then, you know, you have, um, I'm trying, forgive me if I don't say the uh, names right, but you got Raid. You know, that one was pretty good. Plaza wasn't really that good. But you had, the nice thing about these Black Ops 2 maps, were that they were really great for rushing and um, you know you could use a submachine gun on them fluently and you have um, you know good flanking routes and stuff like there's not really a lot of camping spots uh, you know I mean obviously there is going to be camping in any Call of Duty but you know these maps are basically based on rushing most of the time so let's move down on to number three which is the kill streaks slash guns were fun to use. Now, I'm going to do this in my worst Call of Duty commentary that I do believe that Black Ops 2 was one of the most overpowered uh, games with the weapons. But we're, right now, we're going to be talking about the good side of the weapon choices within Black Ops 2. So, uh, first, we'll get into the kill streaks. We have, you know, uh, Black Ops 1 didn't really have the funnest of kill streaks, but, you know, they were classic kill streaks. You got your choppers, your uh, UAVs, your dog, your. Um, what else do they have? They have the Blackbird, you know, it's all your default regular stuff, but in this game they kind of amplified that a little bit. They made it more like a Modern Warfare game with the killstreaks. They, uh, um, you know, obviously they have a sentry gun, then they, uh, buffed, you know, different things. They have a, um, I, get, I can't remember all of them, but, you know, they have a dragon fire, a lightning strike, and the lightning strike is way better than the mortar fire or whatever, or not mortar fire, the mortar team strike from Black Ops 1, you know, different things that just amp up the whole overall experience, so the kill streaks were fun, and then moving on to the weapons you got, you know, I love running around with this Scorpion Evo, it was just so fun, uh, raining on news in there, we have the Dragon Fire, you know, many people didn't really like the Dragon Fire, but it wasn't that bad of a streak if you could, uh, use it without being shot down fast, you know, you get a couple of kills in it, and there, I've, oh, I just failed there, but, you know, sometimes you could get a couple kills in it, it's not that bad of a streak, but, uh, the weapons, so, you know, you got your Scorpion Evo, the MP7 was really fun to use, you know, shotguns, obviously the Remington, which I will get into in my worst video, so, you know, the Remington was sometimes fun to use if you, uh, you know, were on a map like Nuketown or something, you just rain on those noobs and stuff like that, all good, all good stuff, but, um... You know, I'm also going to be bashing the Remington next time. I mean, because, you know, there's always a bad to everything. And I think the Remington is good to an extent, and then it's bad to an extent. So that's why we're going to be talking about weapon balance within the worst one. But getting on to number two. 
is that the game is fast paced and that coincides I guess with the maps you know there really isn't too much else to say about that's best about Black Ops 2 but the reason why it's fast paced is because of these maps right here like we already said and uh, the the thing about being fast paced is that it just makes the whole overall experience better because when you're uh, playing against someone that's camp or a, a whole team, because I've played a whole team that's camping before, not just you know one person. But if you're playing against someone that's camping the whole game, it's gonna get really boring. Uh, it's gonna get really frustrating, most of all. And uh, you know you just don't want that within Black Ops 2. You don't really have that. You have a lot of people that rush, and you get those few games where those people don't. But overall, in this game, everyone is running around with guns. Like you see, look at that. Everyone is running around with a knife, like or not everyone, but you know like. Every, like there's just so much action within Black Ops 2 and you watch a ghost gameplay and a Black Ops 2 gameplay you'll notice the difference between uh, fast paced and not fast paced so uh, you know fast paced obviously makes the whole experience better and number one is kind of controversial for me but it may it may not be for some other people but it may be uh, you know and that's the idea of the score streak idea now I'm going to be talking about the goods and the bads of the score streak, and uh, maybe the bads aren't necessarily bad, but in my eyes, I don't really prefer the score streak. To be honest, I, in my eyes, I prefer either point streaks, which they did in Mono for 3 and they now did in Ghosts, or I prefer kill streaks. Now, I do prefer uh, point streaks a little more over kill streaks just because they reward you for the objective, but I like the fact that if you get 5 kills, you could get a Predator Missile. You know, with the Mono for 3, obviously, there's no Predator Missile and Ghosts, except for the Trinity Rocket. But, you know, if you get a, um, uh, 5 kills, you'll always get that. But, like, let's say you get 4 kills and you cap a flag, you're gonna get a Predator Missile in Mono for 3, because you, uh, cap the flag, you helped out with the objective and stuff like that. And I like that. Now, here's the thing that I like about the score streak idea. The score streak makes you play the objective even more. So, like, let's say you're playing Kill Confirmed, like I am in this game. Collecting those tags will help towards your uh, kills or score streaks, I guess you could say. They will help you towards getting them. Uh, in Modern Warfare 3 and Call of Duty Ghosts combined point streaks only help you if you captured objectives like in domination matches. But if you ca if you took no matter how many tags you took within Kill Confirmed, it wouldn't help you towards your score streak loadout kind of. So you know you'd have to get all those kills by yourself or with explosives or whatever. So uh, that's where I think they messed up and they could have done a better job. And that's why I think score streaks uh, was a really good idea. And that's why it's number one for the best thing in Black. Us too, but then, like I said again, it's it's not the worst thing, but it's also not the entire best thing. Like it's kind of hard to explain. Like if this game had point streaks, uh, I think it would be a lot better if they made it have point streaks, but make the kill confirmed. You know, it actually work within kill confirmed. Where, like I said before, that getting the tags actually counts towards like maybe c collecting two tags counts for uh, equals one kill. Maybe if they did it like that with the point streaks, it would have been a lot better. But since this game has no point streaks, like let's say there's no idea of point streaks or kill streaks ever in mind, and this game comes out with score streaks, the idea of score streaks is perfectly fine. Other than that, and uh, a quick side note about that. That is that I would prefer them to put uh, kill streaks, regular kill streaks, and point streaks in TDM and free for all. Because if you all know Thunder, and uh, since Black Ops 2 and this year, and we have a problem within Black Ops 2 where the score streaks don't quite meet as necessary needs that you know you would get. Uh, like, let's say you play TDM and Modern Warfare 2 or Modern Warfare 3 or something, you get a Predator missile that's five kills, and Black Ops 2. Uh, it takes almost, like, if you kept watching uh, Legend of Thunder's videos, he it takes almost, like, 17 kills to just call him dogs, when in Black Ops 1, it was more like 10 with Hardline and 11. So, you know, uh, n that's another reason why I think the score streak fails, but if the score streak was the only thing, it would be the best thing around. So that's why it is number one on my list, and it's kind of confusing to understand, but we are wrapping up the video. Uh, pretty soon, I will have uh, the worst five worst things than Black Ops 2, and that list is going to be easy done. because I really didn't like Black Ops 2, and I could go on for more than five things, but also I have some Call of Duty Ghost stuff out tomorrow. Obviously, the De Devastation map pack comes out, so I will be doing videos on that uh, on my channel tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. A bunch of videos, probably, because, you know, we got all the maps, and I'm probably not going to do the Ripper because I already have a video of that, but I'll see you on my next upload, which is the Devastation, and then the worst um, and best playlist which is on my channel in the description below. I'm Ninja Geek. I'm out.
Peace. 